Welcome back. On today's East Jefferson General Hospital's Medical Moment, Camille Whitworth takes us inside the profession of cardiology and how it has evolved into less trauma for the patient. We are talking heart health and how you can notice the signs in your body if you need to see a cardiologist. Dr. Habanov Saxena is a cardiologist here at the hospital. He tells us what to look out for and the advancements in healthcare. One in 36 patients die of heart attack every year. Uh, 805,000 people are affected by heart attacks uh, throughout uh, in a given year in America. So this is a big problem. And that's what motivated me to join cardiology and contribute to people and patient care. The problem with heart attack is that it's not only the presenting situation, but the sequelae that it has on patients for the next 10, 20 years. Once the heart becomes weak, it can compromise your quality of life. So what we strive to do, what, the reason why I went into cardiology is number one, to treat heart attacks and other heart conditions. Number two, to prevent heart disease. And three, to prevent progression of the heart being weak uh, getting weaker over time uh, in these sick patients. So anybody who has a history of like uh, heart disease in the family uh, and people have, who have symptoms such as chest pain, who are feeling short of breath, who are having palpitations, uh, these are the prime candidates who should immediately come and see cardiology and get care. Uh, because cardiac disease can uh, present, um, can be hiding, and you want to make sure that you catch it in time, because if you let things progress, then people can uh, present later in a much worse situation. So you want to be proactive, you want to be early, and you want to take care of them as soon as you find out what's going on. Caution is good, but if you have symptoms, sometimes you have to weigh the risk and benefits. Uh, and if it's really bothering you, starting with a televisit is good. Uh, and uh, the doctors can assess if you, it's something that you should really get checked, and then if you should come into the hospital to kind of be seen personally. Traditional heart surgeries uh, are cumbersome. Uh, when people come into the hospital. A decade ago, the surgical scars would extend all the way from the front of your chest to the bottom of your chest, and these scars would last long. Some people would also develop uh, something called keloids, which, where the scar overreacts and leaves a big uh, reminder of the surgery in the future. And then the recovery takes time. So it, they're in the hospital for five, seven days. Sometimes there can be bleeding complications, which are part of the whole spectrum. Uh, but uh, in select cases uh, who are good candidates for newer therapies, we basically are moving towards minimally invasive therapy. And this is the magic of cardiology these days. Because with these minimal uh, procedures, you start the procedure in the morning, you're done by afternoon, the patient is awake, uh, and the procedure is done. We monitor them for 24, maybe 48 hours, and they are good, they go home with nothing but a small scar in the groin, that's it. So cardiology as a field has grown significantly in the last decade, uh, and EJ is a leader in cardiology. Um, so one of the biggest developments is minimally invasive heart replacement. Uh, now previously, in the last decade, heart replacement would only be done through an open approach, where you uh, basically cut the chest open and then replace the heart valves. But with the new technology that has come out, we basically go through small incisions through the groin, we pass catheters which go to the heart, and they, we replace the heart valve. It's actually a miracle of science in the last decade. The future uh, is headed in two directions. Number one is we, we, we are gonna be on the minimally invasive spectrum more and more going forward. Currently, the maximum number of minimally invasive valve replacements are done for the aortic valve, which is just one valve of the heart. The community has started working on the other valve, which is the mitral valve, but there are two other valves in the heart which also need to be addressed. Research is going on, uh, and if things are successful the way they are going uh, right now, we would be able to do most of these procedures minimally invasive. When we see patients in clinic, uh, they, they come in with a variety of complaints that hamper their quality of life. By the interventions that we do at EJ, uh, we are able to change uh, their uh, trajectory of their life. Um, for example, when we recently saw a patient who had, uh, we saw a, 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 a middle-aged woman who had weak heart and she was not able to walk. Uh, through our intervention, through our medical therapy, through our um, rehabilitation care, we were able to get her back to life to do what she loves to do, to get her hiking, to be with her children. So that is the most rewarding part of cardiology. 
So what do all of these advancements mean for you? Recovery time is shorter and you can get back to the life you love faster. I'm Camille Whitworth. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Camille. As always, please visit EJGH.org for more information.